And here we are for the second match of the Piscatella vs Nerdicat. This time it's Criminal vs Jinteki Replicate Imperfection. I'm actually quite surprised at this choice of cooperation for Piscatella. Jinteki is not known for uh, safe plays. Yeah, I was very, very surprised to see Jinteki. <laughs> Jinteki. <laughs> Jinteki yeah, Replicate Imperfection is a bit safer, uh, I mean, a bit more conservative than uh, Personal Revolution, but it's still. The corporation that you want to be playing bold moves, the kind of game that you start with three agendas on the table or something. Yeah, well, we'll have to see how it pans out. Let me just get uh, the initial hands up. Mm -hmm. Ah, it's good, I need to... No, oh, like brutal start for the runner. Look at this hand. Uh, give a little look. Just look at it. Ooh. Oh, he's just, he's all the good things. All, oh, the good things. all of them. The only thing missing is an FAO instead of a background or something. It's like, ouch. Nasty. And he's got all the tricks as well. It's not just the breakers. It's, you know, he's got the it's everything, everything, everything. I'm wondering uh, how Nerdy, how Piscatel is going to save himself. He really has a good hand as well. I mean, he can play those uh, melons. He can uh, have a good time. I would, sus sus I would. The on only good player at the moment that would save him would be an Enigma on headquarters. But then Nerdy Cat can still run with uh, Keymaster. Yeah. So whatever he does, unless he he could he can't afford even the Wall of Thorns. So it's really nasty. Oh well, this is going to be an interesting opener. So Absolutely. We double Melange Mining Core as well, so if one goes, it's always the backup. Yep, and an Itchy. I suspect he's going to play Wall of Thorns and Itchy R&D in Headquarters. Well, That's usually my, my starting move, but it's going to hurt so much afterwards. Yeah, it's a costly opener. But... No, I mean, if you expect an FAO, you really don't want to do that. But uh, at the start of the game now, it might scare the, the... If he actually plays the E.T. in headquarters, it might be just enough to save him. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's going to be... I mean, you, you obviously, you mind less about R&D here, because obviously it's the criminal, you know, you don't suspect Legium or Maker's Art. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but well, it's interesting to see. What I'm, su what I'm suspecting will happen is he's going to play E.T. in headquarters, and um, Nerdicat is going to run, he's going to raise E.T., and it is not going to really do much at this point because he doesn't have any programs. Yeah. But it but is going to stop, um, stop him from playing uh, account siphon. I mean, is there a case here for just not resing itchy? If you were to play itchy in front of it, I mean, guess what would be the point in that case? But I usually don't res itchy. I, 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 unless against criminal, I protect my um, my headquarters with uh, something that stops runs. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if, if, if he did put each you down here, I mean, you might as well not res it and then wait for a moment yeah, when yeah. he's going to be more effective. I mean, it's not like, I mean, the worst he can lose here is Milan, and obviously he's given yeah. Gabriel two credits, but... Itchy, you want to res when he has at least one program, otherwise it's pretty yeah. worthless. Yeah. It's... I mean, I've also, once they know it's there as well, it's, you know, it loses all surprise back then. Mm. Well, of course, with uh, Jindeki, it still has its uses, because you force them to run it if they want to run your remotes. Yeah. But, um... It's not a good start of the game, Ice. Mm. Problem is, uh, he doesn't know what he has and has an account siphon in his hand, so it really goes down to what he plays to protect headquarters. Yeah. And, and none of his eyes is perfect for the job because Enigma is the, the best one, and Dirty Cat is lucky enough to have the key master in his hand. Yeah. He plus play the Enigma. That's the best one he could actually do. It's so let's see how it, let's see how it goes. Yeah, in my noobish ways. <laughs> I'm suspecting uh, the runner is going to uh, run, get hit by Enigma. Oh, he actually runs R&D. Yeah, I, would have, I think I probably would have gone for R&D as well, because you get the information, you, you know what's coming up next round, so... Mm. So oh, hello. Ooh, straight face in the snare. Because if he pays for this, he can't res a nickname. Nah, so. he can, he can. He has seven credits exactly. Oh, yes, he does. Oh, yes. All of the money. 
hold on, hold on. Did he have the giants? Um, That's the problem. Many people just uh, go ahead and don't use the snare. Yeah, I, I use. I tend. To oh no! I mean, the problem is people just press yes and yeah. uh, then trust the snare. The corporation doesn't have a chance to use it. Yeah, so I I, I tend to wait a few seconds before yeah. I do anything. AFK? He's in the uh, tournament, why is he AFK? Oh yeah, he, he did go be right back actually, yeah. Yeah, but he said back afterwards. Oh, did he? Ah, oh, okay. There we go. All sorted. We're all okay. Okay. Right, and he okay. still has the mind to raise the Enigma, but let's see what it does. That, that's big. Whoa, both icebreakers gone. Ouch. Nasty. Well, his perfect hand has just taken a bit of a hit. Yeah, absolutely. He's got, money. He's got all the money he could ever want, but exactly, yeah. Nothing to spend it on. <laughs> a good replacement. Yeah, I was going to say that's not exactly the replacement you wanted back again, is it? Ouch. I mean, that's oh. damage. If, if you run into a snare or a neural katana early on, you can lose a good opening. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Oh, how much does Piscatella want this uh, scorched earth now? <laughs> I'd be very surprised if he's running. No, what well, I mean. Okay, he puts the prevent R and D with that ice. Why not put it to put your melons behind it? That's really yeah, going to give you money. Yeah. And you know, Jinteki needs money. Either, you know, whichever version it's playing. He's playing the game very, very safe. He could have played that ice wall with uh, uh, with uh, melons and would have made a lot of money. And if he, if the criminal actually played the Aurora to break, mm -hmm. uh, he could then play the second melons. And protect it with uh, with uh, the Nitsi in front or something. Oh, yeah. I'm not I'm not really excited with this play. The problem is that when you play Replicate with Perfection, that ice wall is not very useful in front of your uh, six central servers. Yeah, you want to put things that you know you want to put ice that's going to give the runner a pain to, to get through every time. Something like Neuro Katana, something like I mean even Enigma that lets you lose a flick each time. Think, yeah, but... Enigma is easy because you can easy, you can break it very cheap. But yeah. uh, in a katana, you can also break it very cheap if you have, for example, uh, a mimic. So that's why uh, Wall of Thorns and uh, Itzy are perfect for it. Cold booth as well, I imagine. I think I'm going to start splashing Viper as well when it comes out. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Viper is Viper's like the poor man's enigma, but also yeah, but it's unbreakable by Yog. Yeah, which is big. It's always devastating when your kids the table because it's like, you know, all those enigmas you've got down, all those victors are just a waste of time now. Mm -hmm. common, a common, common inclusion in Criminal, Diesel, gets that deck moving. I do think that uh, Piscatale is playing too defensively again. After the snare, you, especially when you, when you must damage the runner a lot, mm. it's the point for it take you to take the offensive. Play your cards, start to, to do the bad stuff. Different options, you know, straight away. Stuff they have to pick between. Yeah. So get your um, get your uh, melons. Get some money out. It would be much more effective than getting one one. You've got two melons as well. So you know, if worst case scenario. You can another. Another thing we should need to remember about criminals should never leave just one ice breaker in front of your HQ. Not only if they know what it is, they can easily break it and I can't save on you. But uh, yeah, there's so many stuff yeah that can that they can bypass it. You need to put two of them to uh, make them waste a lot of money if they try to break through. Oh, that's a bad choice in my opinion. Well, it's slightly bad choice, not so bad at the start of the game. The problem is that aiming for a long game, I guess. But... The problem is that, as it is, the criminal is just going to run the melange as soon as he sees it. And he's just going to say, okay, I'm just going to eat the, the uh, itchy. Or I'm go going to eat that ice, whatever it is. Yeah. Uh, but because it's itchy, it's not going to hurt him at all. I mean, the uh, trouble is, I mean, the wall of thorns there would have been very expensive. But it probably, because he could have afforded that, couldn't he? Yeah. Yeah, he could, he could. The wall of thorns there, maybe not play the itchy now, but the wall of thorns in. And then obviously, uh, yeah, that would end the run and also allow him to keep Melange in play for a few more turns. Yeah, yeah, he wouldn't be able to break it with the uh, with the Aurora. 
or have been for, prohibitively expensive. And even two tenths of melons for the eat for uh, the teki is very useful. Very useful. I mean, what's your? Have you played much replicating perfection? What's your sort of take with them? Um, I have a similar style to what uh, our friend does here, Scatella. Um, but in my uh, replicated perfection, I play it fast advance. I actually use a uh, trick of light and I try to. Sp I play the agenda naked and then I advance it at one straight uh, to, uh, to, to, to win, to, to, to score it. And uh, I usually. The, my biggest weakness at the moment is when I play, for example, uh, uh, my card without any tokens and the runner straight up runs on it. Which is a problem because um, the only thing that it can be that it can help is the snare. Yeah, and I think that, you know, obviously that's going to be better now that we've got Edge of the World or Win. Mm. It's going to improve quite a bit because then now I can actually put a card naked and be fairly certain that the runner is not going to run it. And then next turn I can put three advancement cards and make sure that the runner is not going to run it. Yeah. Yeah, the, could be yeah. Away, yeah. the problem is that if I play the card with two advancement tokens, uh, that's yeah. It it does it just uh, slows the runner a bit, and yeah. it's also no that's interesting. I mean, he's a bit lucky that uh, he actually played the nice break. And now it's is going to hurt. Oh, pff, there we go. But he doesn't care so much now. He doesn't care. He does have the melange. Yeah, he's got the melange, and also obviously. This this won't stop, for example, um, him being able to res Ichi because he loses it, you know, five. Mm -hmm. I mean, he can still res Ichi, he can still destroy Peacock here. Um, I mean, how many clicks has Nobi Tackle left? He's still got three clicks, so he could still save. I mean, it's going to be expensive, but he could still save um, Peacock. And it does seem that uh, Nerdica doesn't care about tags. Oh no, he, that, he did clear the tag he got from the snare. I'm not, I thought he didn't. Uh, yeah, he's, still got, he's got the two from account cipher now. Oh, there goes one. I assume if he's going to get rid of one, he'll get rid of both. But mm. I mean, you have to question, what kind of things are Jinteki going to be splashing in to make use of those tags? I mean, closed accounts is a really great surprise, but not everyone's going to put it in. Oh, here comes the Ichi. And now it's going to hurt. Not so much, but in, in his position I would actually boost the trace. How much do you need to boost it? He has a lot of credits now. He, he can't boost it very well. I mean, it's very unfortunate here, because um, mm. he could have not cleared the tags. If he was feeling really bold, he could have maybe avoided not clearing the tags and then just... It's so difficult, though, getting a tag. I think a lot of runners against many corporations will just assume that there's something going to be bad in there. But... Mm. No, unfortunately, Piscatella is, is poor and doesn't have the money to uh, help his melange, and it doesn't stop him. Yeah. That's why it was a bad idea, that ice on the uh, R&D. If that uh, ice wall was there, it would have prevented the run by itself. But, never mind, we'll deal with what is. Um, Trace didn't go through. It will be a very big mistake if Scatel actually plays a second melange there. Oh, that's nice. If he can play a second melange and the Sensei in front of Itzy, it might make sense. But... Interesting. The problem is that uh, the, corp the runner can still run and just break the sensei. Of course, they don't know it's a sensei, but still. Ah, but he's off Peacock now, so... Does he got a second Peacock? Uh, oh, has he? No, oh, he just trusted. Oh, oh, no, oh, no, he, cause he, that was the one he had, wasn't it? Uh, let's have a look, all cards. No, no, he got, uh, he got his Peacock trust by Itzy just now. Yeah, so, yeah, so he couldn't break the sensei now. Yeah, he couldn't break the, sentry, the sensei, but he can just break the, uh, the subroutine on Itzy. Ah, uh, yeah, by spending all the clicks. Yeah. yeah, exactly. One click. He only needs to break that yeah, be, if he doesn't have any programs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, he might be afraid that uh, the sense is not going to be something else, but uh, we have to see. It, uh, he doesn't seem like he's uh, uh, that he's afraid of running, so I'm pretty sure he would just run and see what it is. Well, as things have played, I think his Catella's, you know, like it's sort of stabilizing. Mm. Stabilizing here, so. But uh, Piscatella really needs a uh, end of, end of, uh, run ice at the moment. Yeah, because I think he needs that melange out. I mean, he's got a lot of expensive ice here. He's got Ichi, Sensei. Actually, it says there's only three, isn't it? Yeah. Mm. But Ichi, Wall of Thorns. I can assume there's at least another Wall of Thorns or two in his deck somewhere, so. Mm. So Sensei is obviously good against with Atichi. But um, if, he ca if he actually has a Wall of Ice on top of his deck, 
uh, he may uh, he can actually play that with uh, with his uh, melange, and that will help him get some money back. So obviously he doesn't know that the cat's got an aurora. So yeah, yeah. But um, if he, he that will be bad if he actually if Nerdicat uh, puts the aurora down just to break uh, the wall of ice and then runs. The Aurora is going to be trust by Itzy, so yeah, still true. still a big win-win for the... Yeah. Uh... I mean, looking at the board state at this point, I mean, you know, this is what we normally like to see with criminal, a sort of big empty board. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so yeah. The game, you know, not going to play anything, just happy to just see what they can do without yeah. anything. Yeah, yeah. And I think we've seen a lot more traditional play here, a lot more that running from the, the early running. Yeah, the... Uh... Uh, this uh, this matchup is a bit more um, courageous from the criminal. He's going straight for the uh, money. Yeah. I'm actually surprised that uh, Piscatella in his own runner they didn't put any account siphon. This card is so good. Mm. So good. The swinging credit it gives, it's amazing. Yeah, because obviously they go down 5, you go up 10. And then... He does go and he's going to go for the... I'm not sure why he used that um, precognition though. Um, I, Did think, he... I think a lot of Jinteki players probably just see it and think, you know, I've got it in my deck, might as well play it now to see what's coming up. I mean, mm. um, how do you like to use it here? <sighs> as an early game defense, it's very good. Mm. So you can avoid, you can ignore basically R&D for a few turns yeah. and make sure you can build up before you big draw your agendas. And it's also one, a late game defense. If you know that uh, the runner can just break through your deck, your R&D, unless you waste every ice you have to protect it, then it can actually uh, protect you for a few turns without you yeah. having to care for it. Mm -hmm. um, and it's also, if you, we, we have, it's in deck, unfortunately, don't have anything that combos very well with it, like um, yeah. accelerated beta test. I mean, I've seen I've seen arguments that putting precognition with accelerated beta test is quite expensive because obviously, if you want to use even two precognitions, that's six of your influence for HB. So, mm. Yeah, it's all a bit of a all a bit of a you know debate. Mm. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, here comes the money. Yep. Here comes the agenda. Straight agenda first. Wow, it, it's it's amazing actually. Uh, he he did play. Um, Precognition, and then they run a straight up run. Um, this usually doesn't happen when the runner sees a precognition. They say, "Okay, they put something safe on top." Yeah, I, and I guess, I guess the meta is just shifting, so people know that you're more likely to put something you don't mind drawing on top. So, yeah, but uh, on the other hand, uh, the fact that the uh, Ajiteki protected the server, they played, yeah. he actually played the agenda, uh, means that. Um, if they and then the raise the ice must have given the signal to the runner that uh, this is an agenda. Yeah. So, otherwise, why would they? Otherwise, why would they raise the ice? They would just let them through and see nothing. Yeah. I mean, as nerdy cat, I guess you have to assume here that you're not going to be able to make it through that remote server. Well, yeah, I guess you can, can't you? Because you've got each sheet and so, uh, it's still plausible. Mm. I'm not sure. I like this uh, this play. Wow. Why? Maybe he's trying to convince um, convince Nerdy Cat that you know that R and D needs more protection. I'm wondering if if he expects him to actually be playing Aurora at the moment, because that's the only that's the only good against Aurora at the moment. Yeah, but he's done exactly. I mean, that's exactly. I mean, because against Corroder, obviously, that doesn't change anything. But yeah. against Aurora, that's an extra two credits. So. Yeah, yeah, it's like mind reading at this moment. It's pretty impressive. It's, pretty impressive. it's really impressive. Yeah. Serendipity. Yeah. Why does he run archives? Um. Well, uh, apparently he's just going to get to see the. No, he has nothing there. Yeah, he already knew what was in there. Oh, interesting. Maybe, Maybe he. He wanted it for the. Um, he wanted it to be the run on the remote, didn't he? Oh yeah, right, right, right. Yeah, but he could. Right then he could just do it safely on the. Um... Ah, yeah, he oh. wants it. I don't like this. No, no, not a good play. Oh. He's going to. He's not going to bypass the thing, but he doesn't care. The Itzy doesn't trust any programs. Yeah. He just gave himself away. Ah oh, man. So obviously straight through there. That's an easy two points for um, Nerdy Cats. So that's two out of the. So he needs to get 
four three. in this match? They're four, four points to win. Yeah, three to tie, four to win. So yeah, I think that was a blood play. You just let him through. He he's just going to break your uh, your trace anyway. He doesn't have any program. So yeah, yeah. why why waste your sense? Why? Yeah. And he's left now he, zero credits now. And now he knows what he has. That was a really bad play from Piscatella there. Well, we can only learn. So there goes brain trust. Mm -hmm. So next turn, what Piscatella needs to do is. Uh, Maybe play the melange and uh, put a credit and take two credits. Not sure if that would help. It, he should really have put some in there under. Yeah, I mean, mm, he could put melange in. I mean, I think here Nerdicat has to assume that he won't play another agenda. How that went so quickly. So I mean, I I guess what would Nerdicat think here? Because if you play another card to that remote, I'm going to assume it won't be an agenda, so it'll either be. The launch is a fairly good choice because a pad campaign you probably put in another server. Mm, maybe. maybe. Ice wall again. I'm not sure what the play is here. Is that basically the the runner just can build? Oh, there comes the corridor. Now he doesn't care. Yeah. That's going to cost him running. two every time to yeah. break. Got corridor and or I guess just to cover any range of scenarios. Hmm. I mean, I'm personally a fan of less breakers, <laughs> less is better. <laughs> Probably, yeah, you get all your tricks afterwards. Yeah. Well, let's start running R&D then, it seems. Yep, there we go, R&D. R&D. So it's only going to cost him two to break. Yeah, two per run. It cost uh, Piscatella four in total to uh, yeah, advance the dice wall. He's very cheap, so... So, I mean, what, at what point do you think you should stop hitting servers? How expensive does the server have to be before you're like, you know what, no? It depends on how much money producing do they have. If they have a lot of um, uh, tool, uh, toolboxes and uh, cyber feeders and stuff, it's obviously easier for them to run on yeah. one server per turn. And when it starts to get to the 4-5 range, I start being like, oh, this is quite expensive. Like, as a criminal, you know, with, with, with no sort of innate money generation, like Cyberfeed, I know I could splash it, but mm -hmm. you know, if, I was, if I didn't have any out, when it gets to sort of 4 or 5, I'm like, oh, it's getting expensive. Exactly. Yeah. You, you don't want to be running so often that way. Yeah. Unless you have, like, a magnum opus and you don't care. I to see Lemuria Codecracker. I mean, it's very good against Shinteki. Usually personal, evolu personal, uh, yeah, personal evolution rather than replicating perfection, but... Drawing cards, what is he looking for? Found himself a bit of brain trust. He's got plenty of ice, although obviously the Ichis at the moment are still sort of easy to break, so... An interesting play would be putting that katana in front of the remote server and then playing your... Uh, uh... Now, this is why drawing as the corporation is a, it's a risky move. <laughs> mm. and Problem is if he actually... He played the... Oh. Hmm. I'm not sure I like this. Well, the good thing is that if he actually runs it, he may get to trust that um, uh, that corroder. So he knows that the runner is probably going to avoid running. What's your opinion of uh, discarding agendas? Oh, uh, no, I thought he'd just done it then, but he hadn't. Yeah, he discarded it. Uh, depends on how likely the runner is to uh, run on my remotes, on my archives. Exactly, yeah. If, uh, if I... Very often, if I if I get the agenda screwed, I don't have an option. So sometimes yeah, I just have yeah. to do it and hope for the best. I mean, obviously here with replicating perfection, your archives is more likely to get run just to get mm. through to the other remote. Yeah, yeah. So I guess it's a lot more dangerous to do. That. Although you could easily run also the ice wall because you could just enter run, so you don't care. Yeah. But I mean, in, in most, I mean, in, in general, replicating perfection setups and archives is usually going to be a place where the weakest ice is. So. Mm. Yes, Actually, out. very often I play uh, the same strength ice. I play E.T. and uh, Wall of Thorns on all three. Yeah, because I, 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 mm, ideally, obviously, you want to have a lot on each. I mean, he has put Wall of Thorns on archives here, but he hasn't had the money to res it just yet. So, mm. I mean, maybe that's what he's trying to do with Ice Wall on R&D. He's trying to get the strength level so they all sort of balance up a bit. I think he forgot to, that he has to press twice F12. Uh, yeah, yeah, I've seen that. people do that occasionally. 
Now people know that unless this uh, turn uh, number comes up, you haven't finished correctly. Yeah. I'd like to... Okay, what's, what's Nerdy Cat's tax strategy here? I mean, you can keep looking at R&D here for relatively cheap, so... I suspect maybe Nerdy Cat's going to try and sneak door now. We'll see. Oh yeah, that's true. And obviously with one credit, there's pretty much nothing Piscatella can res on archives that will... Um, that. And we have just, he has just seen Piscatella draw, you know, three or four cards, so obviously... Mm. If you're, you're going to do that, and it has there happened. We go. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, it has happened. If you see them draw that many cards, but then again, that that remote's going to be a bit safer now because he won't we want to run it without an entry breaker. Yeah, I mean, if he pulls um, fetal AI and brain trust here, it could be not game over, but you know, obviously he'll have enough points to. Oh, fetal AI! And he doesn't have the money. He does, he does have a lot of credits, he does have the money. Oh, uh, right, yeah, no, it doesn't require any activation. Well, he won the, he won the match, the, uh, he won the, the, the set, but uh, Piscatella may still get uh, one point or two points from Absolutely. the win. The win, yeah. Um, I mean, they're tied at the moment, unless he gets another point. I guess. No, 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 the Piscatella only got three points last game. Oh, but... Oh, of course, yes, because that's a two-point agenda, isn't it? I'm looking at, I'm thinking there's one. Yes, okay, there we go. Then. So now is the time to play that uh, Melange Man. Now. Yeah. Right now. I mean, you've got nothing to really lose at this point, so. Yeah. I mean, there's that thing when you're, you know, when you're behind in a game, take more risks because you know if you play a standard game and you know you're already behind, then you're mm. not going to catch up. But if you take a risk, you're either going to end the game quicker and you can play another one, or you can um, obviously get back in the game. So. Mm. The, the the bad thing is that if he had one more credit, he could protect protect archives with the Wall of Thorns. But yeah, if he manages to snatch another agenda, it's going to be very lucky from uh, Nerdigat. Let's see okay. if he's lucky. Painful. We've seen some pretty lucky pulls this game. Mm -hmm. so well, uh, it uh, it's a par for the course. Uh, Piscatella was very lucky with his sniping. Yeah, he managed to snipe two agenda out of three runs on HQ. So. You, you, you know, you can go some games and all your agendas can heap at the bottom of the, the, the your R&D and you can't, you won't see anything for ages and, you, you know, you, as the runner, you run their HQ and you keep running and, like, you know, there must be an, R, an you know, agenda hiding there by now, but mm. it never is. It's all at the bottom of the R&D. What is he going to do? Run? Oh, I just want to see if there's an agenda there, I guess. Oh, those those two credits start to uh, pile up. Yeah. Let's see if he... Requisition, he wins. I don't think he has any priority. I think he's playing with no, two pointers. Yeah, he's probably playing ten two pointers. Yeah. Oh, lucky there. Oh, that was uh, uh, probably good to use my lance one more time, at least. Then he oh, can no. protect archives. Or he could play. Um, he could play the uh, Hunts Fund and then play an Itzy, and in front mm. of R&D as well. In this, at this point, though, like I think playing Hedgeman and Ichi would be a sort of a sort of standard solid play, but I think using the Melange here, like you're mm. so far behind, you, yeah. you can take the risk that they'll just pull another agenda. And, and exactly, you, know, you can protect the uh, archives afterwards, but uh, you have they have one more run on R&D, and uh, you have to take the risk that they won't hit any more agendas. But you've already lost the game, the, the set, so to, yeah, take the risk. Yeah, yeah. So let's see if you're going to go for the uh, risky play or not. And I'm pretty. And the, you also, if he actually runs our uh, headquarters when you have the money, he's going to get a face full of uh, wall of thorns. So that's all good. I mean, what does? I mean, look at. Oh, hello! He just trashed. Uh, what? Right. Why? <laughs> Why? Why do this? Why? No! Oh, no! Okay. <laughs> I guess um, oh, he's, he has gone for the hedge fund and Ichi, but not quite in the order we were expecting. No, no I'm really surprised about this play. That Wall of Thorns would be res next turn. Why Why go for the weak Katana? Yeah, but... Mind. Because, he, you, know, right, he does, you know, even if he played the hedge fund and still, like, I don't know, took two credits or did something else, he'd still have the money to res it here. Obviously, if you're going to play hedge fund and take two credits... The problem is you, need, you really need protection. You, you can't just go around thrashing your eyes without a reason. Yeah, I have to admit, it, I, I think I think it is something that people don't do enough. Like, not enough people do trash their eyes. But I think 
it's still you know a, a still a limited scenario type thing. You only want to trash in a handful of scenarios. Mm. Look, nope, no more luck on R and D. That was not the risk I was expecting. Hmm. <laughs> well, I guess if they're going to take a risk, there's one of them. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah. Ah, uh, here we go. Ah, it's time to It's going to start getting very cheap to run R and D now. Yeah. But data dealer was quite interesting. That he'll actually use data dealer here because. Mm. Oh no! Well, he's already won everything. So no point. You would only have to. I would only use a data dealer at the moment if I wanted to. Uh, uh, I was sure I was getting an agenda of the same cost at least, because otherwise you risk your own game. So you see, here he just saved the credit. There was no point, no reason to trust that uh, Wall of Thorns. Yeah. Why not just play that katana with the Wall of Thorns? There's, you won't lose anything about it. One credit, and you have enough credits at the moment. You have your melange. Oh, another bump. I think maybe he's just... I think he's trying to... I mean, I say this, but he did just trash Wall of Thorns. I think he's trying to secure up his central servers, like, before he, well, he... I think he's trying to secure everything in the central server before he can start working on the remote server of gender, of gender advancement. But, I mean, saying that, he did just trash Wall of Thorns. <laughs> so... How much... Did he trash all the dama or all oh. the cards? That, did, that was when I asked him. Wow, he had exactly three cards. No, he had four cards. I was looking at your hand. Yeah. <laughs> He no. did keep that uh, inside Zub. You forget that Jinteki still has a second win condition here, so they can still flatline you. Yeah, but I don't think that's a flatline deck, to tell you the truth. He jacks out. Whoa, he's afraid of a snare. Nicely played there. Oh, yeah, because he was obviously sneaking or beating him, so. Oh, he's got Tolwoof. I've seen Tolwoof. He's got a lot of expensive ice. He definitely needs to hit that melange. Mm -hmm. Now would be the best time to use that melange. Yeah. <laughs> use it. We're willing him to use it. This go. Make it this go. Make it so. Come I'm on, this. I'm holding my breath. I'm holding my breath. I'm this... Your R&D protected. You have, no agenda. you have one agenda in this queue. Just use it. There we go. There we go. There we go. Some money. Now he can afford to raise each tree he can get. Hold this yeah. down. Um. The problem is now that uh, he doesn't have a lot of ice to uh, to protect anything else except the melange. Now he does have the toll booth, but uh, he probably wants to use that. Uh, oh, he does have a three pointer. Oh, uh, oh it's a tree. Ooh. I'm wondering if he's. If he actually tries to play that with uh, just toll booth, it's going to be a very bad play. He should be expecting an inside job by now. And what's he going? I mean, what, what, the question is, what's he going to use executive treat for in this deck? I mean, what? What? Why would you? Why would you? Because he's got things like toll booth. We've seen toll booth. We've seen wall of thorns. You know, priority requisition here mm -hmm. would be very effective for getting some of those big ice up. Um, executive retreat seems like an unusual choice for this deck. Um, it's a it's a good choice if you want a three pointer and you don't have expensive ice. But in this case, he does have expensive ice. Yeah. So I'm not sure. Maybe he just. Maybe wants... like <laughs> I don't know. I'm not absolutely <laughs> sure. He will have to explain it to us once he uh, sees the video. Yeah. Okay. Well, never mind. I would uh, still go for a mm, a good play here. Would be tall booth ice wall on top and. Uh, a priority in the executive retreat behind it. Mm. You probably don't want uh, him to snipe it from your hand, and that's the safest play at this moment. We've talked a lot about Piscatella, but why don't we? Uh, let's, let's, just, we should take a moment to look over at Nerdy Cat's uh, side of things. I know he's taken quite a sort of. This is quite a traditional criminal setup. Mm -hmm. so, you know, quite playing exactly as you know you'd expect most criminals to in this meta. So I haven't seen anything particularly surprising in his deck. Um, Diesel and Cyberfeeder and Corroda seem to be where most of the influence is. Yeah. He has pretty, st pretty stable uh, splashes. Jintake is really having to think about it. Oh, he's going to go for the uh, protection. Oh. And he just 
put down two. Oh, I see. Yeah, I see. Wow. I would have I would have put another Melanz. He doesn't have that much money. I mean, to res, if that's what's that, that Tolbert, isn't it? No, yeah. that's I think that's a bad play now. You know why? Because um, if um, the runner suspects this is an agenda, yeah, he can just run uh, run R and D. Oh, if he actually pulls up a code breaker, it's probably game over. I mean, the thing is, it's not only that because I mean, that's is that is that. Uh, yeah, I mean the thing about executive retreat is that if you put one token on it, and you know they're never going to fear a project doom bug because even if it is, it'll only do two damage. And also putting one token on it means it's still going to take you two whole turns to score because you have to spend a whole go of three advancing it, and mm. you still can't even score it then. So. Yep. Or with ninja here. Maybe, uh, maybe, maybe he will. Uh, maybe with one token that he didn't uh, score, uh, he's going to trick uh, Nerdica to think that it's a trap. Because very often when you put just one token and you don't score it next turn, people say, okay, it was a trap. And then you, very often you will put, okay, so put a second token. Are you going to run now? And people say, yeah, you didn't score it with one token. Why do you uh, put a second yeah. token? Yeah. I, I'm more of a, I'm a fan of the sort of all at once type advancement. So, and you can't really mix and match it, really. I mean, if you do, you know, one of one way and one of another, people sort of get wise to tricks. So. Mm. So he's going Let's to see. He did get his agenda out, so that was a bit lucky there. Lucky, I mean, fortunate, let's say. Oh, he snipes the other agenda as well. Oh. Very good that the R&D runs the uh, criminal yeah. list. Yeah, I mean, you know, they are, you can have games where you can just run and run and run and never kill. You know, you always miss that one agenda. Mm. At the moment, I think it was a bad choice from uh, Piscatella to play that agenda. One more turn. And trusting that Wall of Thorns. If he had that Wall of Thorns and the Katana there, it would have really stopped him. Now, a uh, criminal can run pretty much for free on his uh, R&D. Oh, that was his play. Okay. Yeah, that makes more sense now. I'd forgotten that he'd advanced that he... Ice Wall. So that does make sense why he'd advanced the Ice Wall earlier on. He was aiming True. for that trick of light. Yeah. So is he going to discard his whole hand? I'm not liking it. He could have uh, put that on Lancer first. Yeah. If he had one more token, he could have played... Uh, he, no, that, that doesn't work. Okay, well, there goes his HQ. Um, R&D is having a... Problem is that he doesn't have anything to make money at the moment. Yeah. Take credits, obviously, but... Maybe thing. he'll be lucky enough to draw the uh, Melanz. That's true. He's only got... Oh, he might have two. We'll have to assume he has two. The problem is that at the moment uh, he... Criminal is not in a very good position because uh, he's already sniped all the agendas and he doesn't have a lot of money. At the moment, you want to be playing faster than a criminal, not slower. Yeah, because, I mean, if you know, when the criminal runs out of money, they're obviously not going to be able to regain it necessarily all at once. You need to take advantage. If they've had the corporation, you want to create those pockets of time. Exactly. Where the runner doesn't can't afford to get through. Or do mm. things, so. And the detect is very good at it because uh, they have pl all the damage that uh, really slows you down as a criminal, as a, yeah. as a runner. Yeah, because taking turns to, you know, pick up more cards is very slow play. And there's very few ways. I mean, unlike money, money you can always accelerate. There are always cards that can get you money quickly, but card acceleration is a lot slower. I mean, we've got mm. Diesel, obviously, and Wildside, but mm. Wildside's not a popular splash. I mean, Diesel, and Diesel only, is only going to come up every once in a while, so... Yeah. Okay. He's going to put another sensei on the remote, I guess. I mean, here, uh, here, sunset would be the upcoming sunset will be quite handy. Uh, that's a bad play, in my opinion, for this uh, uh, thing because now, if the runner wants to just run on the remote, he can just hit Sensei and break Jack out, so he didn't actually lose anything. Whereas with a katana, he has to break it, so that's four credits. Yeah. yeah. And this actually costs a Sensei at the moment will just cost the runner one more extra click. So you go, you lose three clicks. Uh, from your sensei, and the runner loses one per run. Yeah. It's not really a good. Uh, uh, no, you basically shoot your own foot in this case. So now the criminal is preparing so much; it's you won't have a chance to score an agenda afterwards. Second compromised employee. Uh, drawing two compromised employees early in the game is really devastating. I know we've reached the mid game now, but mm. too early on can really speed you along. Quite a lot, yeah. The um, 
the runner. I mean, he's still got lots of tricks as well. I mean, he's got an account siphon if he really needs to bankrupt Piscatelli. For he has so many well. tricks. He has so many tricks. I don't think uh, he's looking good for Piscatella. I think Piscatella is um, quite focused on his goal of uh, uh, trick of lighting his agendas. Yeah. That yeah. he doesn't see the general state of the game at this moment. I mean, the other thing is, um, you know, uh, Nerdy Cat's focused so much on archives that, you know, Piscatella's, uh, you know, hasn't re-strengthened HQ as well, because there'll be a point, obviously, when for Nerdy Cat, it becomes too expensive to go through the archives, and he will just switch back to HQ, and you have mm. to anticipate that change of gear. I'm surprised by his play. He had he could play the Melanz this turn and actually use it next turn, but he didn't. He actually just drew money. Drew cards. So he's rearranging his stack as well. So. Oh, he didn't... Oh, hang on, did he... Um... He used his, uh, he used his uh, executive retreat. Yeah, no, but he used his executive retreat, then used precognition, but it didn't say he ever stopped looking at his stack before he drew. Uh, probably... It... No, yeah, he, uh, he drew the card before he finished the... Uh... Or maybe he did by mistake. Some people just double click on a card yeah, by. Double, double, yeah, double click their deck thinking it will give them the look at cards option. Yeah. Well, fingers crossed that's okay. <laughs> he actually trusts the melange. Wow. He must be feeling quite secure in his money. Well, let's look at the. I mean, he's still got a Sensei in each sheet and a toll booth to res, so. Sorry. Rely on trick of life as well. You know, fast advance needs that money input. I mean, every form of gender advancement needs that money input. But using tricks along as well, so things like trick of light, biotic labor, they cost. You know, they add extra onto that cost mm. of getting agendas through quickly. So that money either which way, really. Mm. Now the FA, the FAO is making money, but they compromise employees, and he knows not that the city is there, so. Could just run. I mean, running into that Ichi there wouldn't have been a disaster for him, and he knows that there's Ichi in this deck, but mm. I guess it's still. I mean, if he could have double FAO'd, I mean, I guess he couldn't suspect Tolbooth here, because Tolbooth's quite an uncommon splash between Puppy Decks. Mm. It's so expensive, but. Exactly. Which is why a priority requisition would make more sense. Yeah. So I'm guessing now he's trying to uh, get the money to play his next agenda. Now there comes, so he's got Nisso. But I don't think that agenda is secure enough at all. He's, uh, he has the inside jobs and then he can just straight bypass the AT. Well, on the bright side, I mean, if, if, you, if this could be called the bright side, <laughs> if he does inside job the top, at least you don't have to res it. But then you do lose the game, so. <laughs> yeah. Maybe uh, if he's... Uh, if he's smart, he should probably put an ice wall in front of that uh, of that toll booth. Well, third compromised employee. Oh, that's a lot of money. I think this is. Um, I think we're looking at a, a sort of. I think we're going through the routines here. Yeah, probably. That's a lot of money for its rest dice. The only chance he has is to play that um, ice wall in front of the toll booth. It's going to cost him yeah. three. But he's going to protect himself from inside jobs, basically. I mean, because he, he doesn't have a code gate breaker, so uh, the toll booth will keep his, his server secure. He could potentially drop um, Zybotsu loyalty and use it as a sort of bluff and try and get, you know, nerdy cat mm. wasting resources getting in. True, true, true. I mean, I think in, in this scenario, with nerdy cat as capable, he's, you know, nerdy cat's got all the options here, so I think that's plausible. On the other hand, nerdy cat has seen two brain trust already. So he knows whatever it is, he probably can't be scored uh, without uh, advancing it first. So my play would probably have been Ice Wall and the Batsu Lawyer behind it. See if he takes the bait. If he doesn't, um, play the uh, the uh, agenda and take some um, take some credits or maybe advance it once, depending on how much credits you have. The problem is because he trusts his own melange. He's very vulnerable now to uh, account siphon if uh, the runner figures a way to run uh, to get a code gate breaker. Yeah. Um... He's going straight for the agenda. Hmm. I think that's probably the end of the game now. 
You should at this point, at this point in the game, you should be always expecting that the runner has surprises, either a steam hack or an inside jab. I mean, if you haven't seen inside jab for uh, for so many turns, they have it in the hand. Where else would they be? And I've just taken a look. Nerdy Cat's down to just ten cards in his deck. So we, you know, been through almost all of his decks. So all of his best tricks are definitely still in waiting. Mm. I mean, I've, we've seen an FAO. I'm just talking through his discard. We've seen one inside job. So he knows it's in there. He's running on HQ. He doesn't even care to uh, lose the click. He's just going to run straight on the remote now yeah. with the inside jab. That's why he should have played that ball of ice. Oh, well, um, well he can. Oh no, because the inside job it went to. That wall of ice would have basically uh, uh, him. sat him down. Yeah, he would. It would have uh, made him able to raise that uh, uh, toll booth. Right. Well, this is it. This is it. He raises it, but. It's not enough. He can just break the end of the run or just break the whole thing with the uh, sentry, with the uh, ninja. I quite like the targeting mechanism for the icebreaker, by the way. I like drawing the arrows over. I find it mm. quite, quite good. Not, but not everybody uses it. I see it. Sometimes I use it and then people are like, oh, how did you do that? So, for anyone who's not aware, it's a good little trick. <laughs> it, helps keep things it helps keep things clear when you're, when you're running. So. Yeah. My GG. Yeah, RTG is typed and ready. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, just say okay. I mean, what do we feel was this Catella's downfall here? I think he didn't take advantage of his melanges even close to enough. He had his melanges waiting. He he had safe melanges and he didn't abuse them. He was uh, far too eager to uh, trust them to play agenda in an unsafe condition. Yeah. When the runner had the surprises and stuff. So I think he he needs to learn to, to, to abuse his advantage when he has it. I mean imagine him having ten more credits at this moment, yeah. It would have been so easy to just play the wall of ice and be certain that an inside jab won't get through. Touch it, yeah. Well, it was an interesting game and uh thank you very much for joining me for this casting. Thank you very much for inviting me. Once uh, the tournament is over, we'll be posting these, or once these both players are uh, out of the Swiss rounds. And uh, until next time, I guess. Yes, till next time. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.